Hello everyone and welcome to Retail Archaeology. In this episode we're going to be taking a look at a store that I've been wanting to do a video on for a very long time, Montgomery Ward. Now unfortunately there's not really anything left of their stores except for the odd label scar like this at Christown Spectrum Mall. But there are still some things that we can take a look at. For example, this 1982 Christmas catalog from Montgomery Ward. But before we take a look at this, let's take a look at what their stores look like in 1999. This footage is from a promotional VHS tape that was sent out for the grand opening of one of their new stores. Now this is from a VHS tape, so the video quality is not great and it's not in widescreen either, but I still think it's worth taking a look at to see what Montgomery Ward stores look like in 1999. Let's check out the store now. While we take this trip back to 1999, let's talk a little bit about Montgomery Ward's history. It was founded in 1872 by Aaron Montgomery Ward, who the company was obviously named after, and it was originally started as a mail order business and then later on they opened department stores. They actually didn't open their first retail outlet until 1926 in Plymouth, Indiana. They grew pretty quickly though from that one store. Three years later, in 1929, they were up to 531 retail locations. I love that this old store footage has the name brands flying across the bottom of the screen. Things like Bugle Boy, I haven't thought about Bugle Boy in forever. It's interesting watching this footage now because this is exactly what I remember Montgomery Ward being right before they closed. It really doesn't look that much dissimilar from a Sears store, even what Sears stores look like today, at least the couple of them that are left. There was at one time a Montgomery Ward store near Superstition Spring Center, so I remember going there when I was a kid and in high school. I think I bought a graphing calculator for one of my math classes from that location. They also had a Philips CDI demo unit in the electronics area, which that was the first time and I think the only time I ever got to play one of those until I was much, much older. And they had the uh, Zelda Faces of Evil game in as the demo disc, and. Even back then, just playing that game for five minutes, I knew it was terrible. They did pretty much carry everything that a Sears or any other department store at the time would carry. I love seeing those old TVs. That's actually a really nice CRT, and I would kind of like to have that now. I've mentioned Sears a couple of times, and I really do think that was their biggest competitor over the years for them. Sears really did surpass them in the economic boom right after World War II, though. You see, the founder of Montgomery Ward made a mistake. He thought there was going to be a recession right after World War II, and so he played things very conservatively, didn't go out and open a lot of new stores, whereas Sears did the opposite and took advantage of the economic boom. And at that point, it really just let Sears surpass Montgomery Ward, and they were really never as big as Sears again. What I find interesting about this VHS tape is we're seeing Montgomery Ward pretty much right at the very end here. By 2000, just one year after this VHS tape came out, Montgomery Ward filed for bankruptcy, and by 2001, they were running commercials like this. Prices have just been flat on thousands of incredible items. At the sale to end all sales. They're going out of business. Final sale. At your neighborhood Montgomery Ward store. Get Yep, by 2001, Montgomery Ward was closing all of their stores, so I guess Sears kind of had the last laugh? Sears wasn't really doing great at this point either, and we all know where they've ended up. Now that we've had a chance to take a look at their stores, let's take a look at that old Christmas catalog from 1982. So here's the 1982 Christmas catalog from Montgomery Ward. And it, it's a pretty thick catalog. It's not as, as thick as, you know, the Sears catalog probably was back then. I know that I have a Sears catalog from 11 years after this one that I did a video on, and it's, it was probably two or three, probably twice as thick as this at least. But this is still a really cool catalog to have. It's almost like a time machine. Let's uh, take a look inside. And, you know, the cover was Smurfs, and so the first thing in the catalog is Smurfs. And I have to be careful because the 20-year-old glue that's holding this catalog together is starting to give, and so unfortunately, like, this first page, for example, is, is falling out now. This is also kind of neat. I forgot this flyer was in here. Shop early. 
uh, probably probably wouldn't honor this now since it's you know over 20 years old <laughs> I wonder if they would honor it on their website though surprisingly Montgomery Wards is still around on the internet go ahead and put that to the side oh those, that's kind of cool these are like not Legos, but Lego set type things for the Smurfs. That's awesome. I loved Legos when I was a kid, and I wouldn't have minded having non-Lego branded ones if uh, they were Smurfs. Okay, I gotta be careful here. Lots more Smurf stuff. Got a Smurf mobile. <laughs> Smurf watches. Oh, and then we're on to strawberry shortcake. I'm pretty sure I've seen this at Goodwill before. I'm pretty sure I've seen these, this guy. I'm pretty sure I've seen before when I've been out thrifting. Oh, even more strawberry shortcake. Even more strawberry shortcake. Strawberry shortcake must have been really popular in 1982. So many pages of strawberry shortcake. Well, now that's problematic. That's, that's exactly what I want, my, my kids running around with confederate flags all over them, Jesus. Okay, Dukes of Hazzard must have been really popular too, because there's several pages dedicated to it. Annie, of course. That's funny, they were able to find a kid with curly red hair to model the clothes. Why doesn't Annie have pupils in this, this, or the dog either? She looks soulless. I always wondered why when they drew this, this particular depiction of Annie, why she doesn't have pupils. It looks creepy. Wait, are those real phones? Or do those just talk to each other? They're like rotary, rotary phones, but that cable doesn't look, look normal. Where is that B? Oh, any intercom telephone set for $12.88. That's kind of interesting. I wonder if they had something similar for GI Joe, but like, you know, in the shape of a military radio or something, that would be cool. I wonder how long that cable is, does it say? 30 feet, a 30 foot cable. Oh no, see, he, th this is awesome. Pac-Man. Pac-Man was of course huge in the early 80s. Now that's really interesting. I've never seen that before. I remember when I was a kid, which not, I was a baby when this catalog came out, but I remember when I was like eight or nine years old, seeing a Kmart like Zelda, game and watch things that were like this form factor and I think there was a Super Mario Brothers one also but this is a Pac-Man one from 1982 that's kind of cool oh and then there's you know, Pac-Man for the Atari 2600 which we all know is an amazing port how much was that let's see here L can you believe this is how people used to shop in the early 80s they would pull out a catalog and have all these pictures to look at <laughs> and then you have to look up the letter Pac-Man game cartridge by Atari. $27.95, so $28. I'm sure a lot of people were disappointed in the Christmas of 82. <laughs> that was a lot of Pac-Man stuff too. Oh my god. Those are horrifying. That that is not what Pac-Man looks like. There's so many weird different depictions even 
back in 82 of Pac-Man, different ways he was represented, like this, mo these monsters here. Oh my god, those are terrible. But then there's, you know, more of just, you know, classic Pac-Man circle with the wedge missing. And then there's this here, which I remember seeing this on the side of the Coleco, the little Coleco arcade game that they made for Pac-Man, which I actually, I have, and I think it's in this catalog. Did we miss it? Or is there like more Pac-Man stuff than this even? Oh, it's right there. So like, I actually have this and that's that Pac-Man right there. Oh, the Pac-Man sheets are kind of cool. Well, even Pac-Man is depicted the different ways on the sheets. That's weird. Oh, Snoopy stuff. We're missing a page. Oh, nope, that's the Pac-Man stuff. I love Snoopy. I love Snoopy now, but I really loved Snoopy and, and Peanuts stuff when I was a kid. I had a Snoopy stuffed animal that had like a bunny suit and he had little bunny ears that you could pull. Oh, I wonder if he's... No, I don't see it. But it was a Snoopy that was about this, about this size, but he had like a yellow pajamas, like jumpsuit on, and then he had ears that you could pull over and they were like rabbit ears. And I have no idea where I got that from or what the story was behind it, but it was like one of my favorite stuffed animals when I was a kid. Now oh, they do have this Snoop, the Snoopy snow cone machine does go back that far. I wasn't sure how old the Snoopy snow cone machine really was, because of course these were hugely popular when I was a kid in, in the late 80s. That's it. There's only one, two, three, four pages of, of Peanuts Snoopy stuff. There was 27 pages of strawberry shortcake. That doesn't seem right. Oh, then we've got the NFL. Watch there be like 30 pages of this. Well, there's already more than the peanut Snoopy stuff. Holy crap. There we go. Now it looks like we're on the kids apparel. Mash pajamas, what? This kid looks thrilled. He, he does not want to be there, or he hates what he's wearing. <laughs> okay, let's find some more interesting stuff. The clothes. A lot of clothes. But I want to see like the vintage electronics and stuff like that. Okay, I had to stop here because this looks like an old cigarette ad to me that you would see like on the back of a magazine. Like you can just imagine right here in the corner, like a cool logo or something. Probably not Marlboro, that's not cowboy enough, but it definitely has old cigarette ad aesthetic going on. Give McGregor and give a name recognized for quality. Meanwhile, McGregor's over here like, welcome to my dick. Like what? Holy crap, they have Jedi robes. That's awesome. What What the hell is this? Is that a costume? Flannel candy stripe his and her night shirt and sleep cap. That's awful. <laughs> Ooh, calculator watches. How much was a calculator watch? Let's see here. How much was F? F. F is thirty dollars. Is that right? I, I thought there would be more than that. G. Casio calculator and game watch. That's fifty. That's still cool though. Oh, I like that one. F. Twenty-four hour musical alarm awakens you with "It's a Small World." Oh God. Never mind. That's awful. Oh, they've got a lot of watches.
Star Wars watches in a MASH watch? Was MASH that popular? I mean, I know MASH was hugely popular, but was it popular enough with a demographic that would want to wear a watch? I mean, Star Wars and Disney, you know, Mickey and Pluto makes sense, but the MASH stuff for kids is confusing to me. I, I just didn't think that was the demographic it was targeted at. Oh, more cool watches. Holly Hobby? I don't know what Holly Hobby is. I know what Barbie is, obviously. We've got Cat in the Hat. Frog. And yeah, now this is getting into the stuff that I always have fun looking at. Cordless foam. Look at that thing. How much was that? $130 for a cordless landline telephone. Answering machines. Oh boy. That is tacky. And then telescopes and binoculars. I'm surprised there's not more phones. <laughs> we got calculators. Is that a typewriter? That is a little typewriter. That's cool. Oh, the speak and spell. They've got the whole, what is this? Speak and spell compact. I've never seen that before. It's, it's just speak and spell without a screen, I guess. These were the hot colors of 1982, apparently. What is that mirror for? We're into the board game section, it looks like. Is that? What? B, okay, what is that for? Collector's can rack. Okay, so they actually made racks for that specifically. I don't know if any of you ever go to antique stores. I've done a couple of videos at antique stores before on the channel. And the, a lot of times they'll have these huge collections of empty beer cans from throughout the ages, basically. So obviously people were collecting them, but here is Montgomery Ward in 1982 selling a display shelf thing specifically for them. That's that's weird. I didn't know that was a thing people did. Look at that bike. What is that? A competition certified two speed BMX bike. Nice. How much was that? 150 bucks. It's one of those tandem bikes. How much was a tandem bike? $250. Wow. What is this? If you belong to an organization that needs money, you can easily raise $110 to $2,200 and more. That's quite the range. With these 50 cent best sellers. Wait, you could buy candy to sell door to door? Like, it, do they sell for charities and stuff? That's weird. I didn't know that was something you could get in the Montgomery Ward catalog. Oh, this looks like a weird... Is this an advertisement section? Is this stuff, other people's stuff being advertised in the Montgomery Ward catalog? What is this? The Double Day Book Club. This is like books on tape. Try us risk-free. <laughs> should mailed one of these in. No postage necessary. I doubt the Double Day Book Club exists, though. I'm sure this would just get sent back, returned to sender. Okay, apparently selling Bic pens for a dollar, you can easily earn 144 to 1920. Those are really oddly specific numbers. What is that? Is that a is that a toilet paper holder radio? Let's see, radios. Oh yeah, they are. This A through H is all radios. So that's a cheeseburger radio. And that's a radio that holds your toilet paper. Weird. Who would want that? Ooh, candy. A 
Oh, here's where you can get personalized things engraved and stuff. Kind of like things remembered, I guess. I didn't realize Montgomery Ward offered a service that did that. It makes sense though. Department stores back then, like Sears, offered all kinds of interesting and weird services too that you wouldn't really think about going to. I mean, nobody thinks about going to a department store now. That's kind of part of the problem, isn't it? Is that a Globe liquor cabinet? That is awesome. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, Hi-fi systems from the 80s. Okay, I really like the, this black one here with the like gray and silver speakers. That almost looks more modern than all of these other ones. Oh my God, those huge console televisions. $750. Wow. That's when it, these were like pieces of furniture back then. Is that a VCR? A video cassette recorder lets you watch what you want on TV. $800 for a VCR. VCRs were very expensive. Even movies on, on VHS were really expensive back then. What is that? Beam scope lens mounts to any TV and more than doubles the size of your picture? It's like a giant magnifying glass that you put in front of the TV to make it bigger? Stupid! It's weird that they have this weird mock-up of the Atari 2600 version of Pac-Man being used as the example, but that seems not great for viewing. Oh, it looks like we're finally getting into the toys and stuff, like the rest of them. Lots of baby dolls. So many baby dolls and accessories. <gasps> Monchichi! I remember these. Yeah, the original Monchichi. I think they had a cartoon and everything. Whoa, is that the Barbie cruise ship? Oh, Glamour Gals. What are Glamour Gals? Is that like off-brand Barbie? Inflatables for fashion dolls. So I guess this is like non-Barbie branded stuff. I'm guessing the Glamour Gals are roughly the same size as Barbie. How much was this cruise, the Queen cruise ship? $67, almost $68. Designer outfits for Brooke Shields? Like a Brooke Shields doll? Brooke Shields doll. <laughs> TM. <laughs> 11 and a half inch tall. Wow. Well, now I know this video is getting long because the battery died while I was in the middle of filming. <laughs> oh, no. Here's the actual Barbie stuff. Look at the Barbie townhome. Oh, the Barbie remote control super vet. I didn't realize that the, the Barbie cars were remote control. That's cool. Is this makeup? Yep, that's makeup and cosmetic stuff for kids. The Mickey talking toothbrush. That must have sold really well because I've seen that pretty frequently at antique stores and places that have like vintage Disney sections. Petite Super International typewriter. We've got toy sewing machines over here. Oh, that's cool. Here's the GI Joe stuff. So we've got a G.I. Joe playset with a canteen and a helmet and walkie-talkies, a compass. And then there's a G.I. Joe inflatable tent. That's awesome. I feel like I'm missing a page. Oh, it's just play kitchen stuff. That's a lot of play kitchen stuff. Is that 
it's like a hot dog stand, like a play hot dog stand. Small fry snack stand for short orders. That's kind of cool. I remember when I was a kid seeing like they had like McDonald's play sets and stuff where you could pretend to work at McDonald's, which is kind of gross when I think back on it now, but they definitely weren't this elaborate, like with a whole stand and everything. Sesame Street Puppet Theater. Oh, ventriloquist dummies. There's, we, we found the creepy kid. <laughs> Oh, baby stuff. Now, I was a baby when this catalog came out, so this would be the section that would have been stuff for me at this time. <laughs> Is that a toy payphone? That's weird. That's kind of cool. Oh. I remember these. C and Say, right? Is that what they're called? Yeah, C and Say, but these are the ones with, back when they had the pull string on them. Instead of that lever, yeah, you can see her pulling the string on it. I remember having one of these when I was a little kid, and mine had a pull string on it. Looks like we've got some of the Fisher Price stuff here. Okay, memory unlocked. They must have made this for several years, this magic set, this Fisher Price, because I had this when I was a kid. Maybe I was like seven or so, but I distinctly remember this. I remember the red balls. I remember this case with like the different doors. And stuff. I had this, that's funny. I totally had forgotten about this thing. Oh, now here's the real Legos. Lego space stuff was always, was always my favorite. Oh, see now this is interesting. This case, this Lego storage case. I have one similar to this. I think it's dated 1983 on the inside of it. Yeah, I love the Lego space stuff, especially the old Lego space stuff. I have a couple, a couple of old sets, but I don't think anything quite this old. Lincoln Logs, Erector's. I never had an Erector set, but I had a friend that had that. Light bright. Oh, that's cool. They have the packs too. They, they, the packs, they would have like a, a black piece of paper with a, a grid on it. Then it would, you could do different, it would teach you how to do different designs like Snoopy and stuff here. Etch a sketch. Always a classic. Still make that, I'm sure, is still pretty popular today. Oh, this is cool. Here's all the little record players and stuff. So that's a WKRP in Cincinnati record. See, again, this is obviously geared towards children. I've seen episodes, reruns of WKRP, and I don't remember that being a kid's show or, or being geared towards children at all. I had this, I had this, this Fisher-Price record player when I was little. I remember that. I had a bunch, I had some of like the, I think the Disney records like the read-along records that went with that and I had a bunch of like McDonald's land stuff too records I remember like little 45s power wheels are these actual power wheels brand battery powered cruising oh these are little tykes how about over here are these power wheels VW rabbit convertible <laughs> okay the Indy car is that an Indy or Formula One a Grand Prix race car. That's cool. Now this is interesting. They have Masters of the Universe stuff, like He-Man, but it must have been pretty new in 1982. I think it was because it's only this one little small section here. They just have a couple. They have like Castle Gray Skull and a few of the action figures. One of the vehicles it looks like. It's weird to see just one small little section devoted to it, and then they've got the generic Army Man right below it. Oh, and here's Playmobil stuff. I still make Playmobil stuff. Oh, and 
Now here is Star Wars stuff. Oh, and Raiders of the Lost Ark also. That's cool. A Raiders of the Lost Ark playset. This is neat. Now I had an action, a Star Wars action figure holder like this, but it wasn't Darth Vader. It was C-3PO and it was cool because it was like a gold plastic color. Oh, they've got at, -AT walkers. This is awesome. There's probably a lot of money on this page now. I'm sure all this stuff now is a fortune. Tonka trucks. Back when they were made out of metal. <laughs> Mountain Dew race car. Looks like we're getting into the board games now. They've got Hungry Hungry Hippos. Always a classic. I, I remember liking these little like mechanical games. These were always fun. Like Tommy made a bunch of these. There's a Donkey Kong game. No, what does that say? Kid Kong. That's not Donkey Kong. <laughs> Kid Kong, the Ape Escape game. Oh, now here's the electronic games. Electronic baseball and basketball. Oh, they've got the Microvision. This was, I believe the first portable system that used inter like interchangeable games, you could get different games for it that would slide in here. A little electronic pinball game. Is that Domino Rally? Did they actually call it Domino Rally back then? Chain Lightning 600 Domino Super Show. Is that a pinball machine? H. Battle of the Gods electronic pinball arcade. What? That's cool. I wonder if any of those still exist. And they save all the cool stuff for the end. Is that Alfie? That is Alfie. I had an Alfie when I was a kid, but it was a little bit different looking than this. But they they cha he changed throughout the years. It was like a little learning game, electronic robot like learning game. I might still have my old Alfie around somewhere. Oh, there's Battleship, Monopoly, Stratego. I remember liking that. Here's Frogger, the board game. Are these all video game ones? Yeah, Frogger, Tron, and Donkey Kong board games. Oh, and here's the more of the electronic games. See, I love these Coleco games. I have Pac-Man and I have Frogger. They're kind of in rough shape, but they do work. And then I have a brand new one that they made a few years ago that I haven't opened yet. That's like a rainbow bright one. I should check that out sometime. But I love these um, VFD, vacuum form display, electronic games. They're so much fun and they look so cool. Now these are interesting, these little arcade games. And there's Defender. I think this is the one that was in was in like Guardians of the Galaxy that Groot is playing. One of the Marvel movies that has guard, the Guardians of the Galaxy in it. Ah, uh, the VIC-20 computer. This was uh, the predecessor to the Commodore 64, the Commodore VIC-20. Look at those graphics. <laughs> Believe it or not though, $229 was a smoking deal for a computer back in the early 80s. They sold a ton of VIC-20s, then they went on to sell a ton of Commodore 64s also. Oh, now we're getting into the video game consoles. That the yeah, the Bally Astrocade. The Odyssey 2. What is this? The new Odyssey 2 voice and sound module. I'm just noticing this down here. Wards, your video game cartridge headquarters. Is it though? Wait, was it? <laughs> It's so crazy to look through one of these, like look through a Christmas catalog and have it, so little of it be video games. But you know, again, this is 1982. So video games were, you know, getting to be a big thing at that point, but 
it wouldn't be, you know, until the mid to late 80s when the Nintendo NES came out and then Sega had the Sega Genesis come out in the late 80s where video games really took off in the United States and you would have like this much of the catalog be video games, it seems like. What's kind of interesting too is this last section is a fold-out section, so you've got the Atari stuff kind of on both pages here. Here's the Atari 2600. I have that I have an Atari 2600 and I have this big clunky holder for it too that it holds games and stuff underneath that you can lift the console up. What do we got for games here in 82? We've got Donkey Kong, Mousetrap, Star Wars, Frogger, Starmaster. Now if we unfold this section here though, we'll see that it's not just Atari. There were a couple of other consoles that were out. For example, the Intellivision by Mattel, which I love the old Intellivision, and it's really a shame how the name has been tarnished by a complete jackass. But you can see the games are a little, little bit graphically more impressive than the Atari 2600 games. And then you've got over here finally at the end the ColecoVision, which is one of the few retro video game systems that I, I don't own. I don't own a ColecoVision and I would love to. How much were the various consoles back then? So okay, looks like the Intellivision was 238, was 199 for the ColecoVision. How much was an Atari 2600? the console price on this part there's the Atari price it's on the back of the catalog 132.88 by the way I'm filming this last bit the next day because my mic cut out at the end so I don't know if this video could possibly be any more of a mess but yeah the Atari was 132.88 so it was significantly cheaper than the other two major systems the Intellivision there at uh, 238 and then what was the ColecoVision? 199 for the ColecoVision. And that is the end of the 1982 Montgomery Ward's Christmas catalog. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, I appreciate it, that's awesome. I, I don't do these catalog videos very often because they end up being pretty long because these are thick. This one is, what are they calling this at the end here? Because I think they call it you these flaps of page two. 540 pages so and obviously I didn't show the whole thing in the video but I did film quite a bit more than what you're gonna see in this video because I've already started the editing process so what I may do is post the whole like unedited version of flipping through this it is really long I think it's over an hour long the uh, and, and, and there are some parts where the microphone did drop out but you can kind of hear my voice but I just I've just clipped those parts out of this video so if that is something you would be interested in seeing, uh, let me know. I can post it on the second channel. I'll, I'll put a link to the second channel up, up here. They usually pop up here on the right, right corner of the screen. But yeah, that's gonna wrap up uh, this look at Montgomery Ward. I know it's a little bit of a different video because there are no Montgomery Ward stores left to go look at, but there are things that you can always look at like their old catalogs and the little bits of old footage that are out there on the internet. As always, everyone, Thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retail archaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out my look at Montgomery Ward. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and also make sure to follow at the social media links down there because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the channel.